so here's a quick video for Squares TV where I am doing loads more stuff you know, explaining technical live streaming rigs mostly. I've got a Discord where we're trying to talk about this kind of stuff. This is about my Twitch music streams and how I've kind of got this whole audio visual live music reactive experience that I've set up for Twitch. And I hope you'll join me there too. That's twitch.tv slash Michael Forrest. But let's have a look and see how it all fits together. Today, I'm gonna to show you my live rig. <laughs> This is my mixer, uh, a Zoom L20R. So it's actually a multi-track recorder as well as a mixer because I wanted something that I could um, record and do like hardware jams without having to have a computer to record. And um, this actually is mixed by this app on the iPad. So it's a bit annoying that you have to Bluetooth to the app to mix, but here's all the channels on there. I can set everything up like that. Here's its little Bluetooth connection there, remote. And then that's all wired into this patch bay here. So I've got everything kind of, I've got some default wiring between the two, but the patch bay lets me access things from the front. So the next thing you need to know about is the headset, uh, which is what I'm talking into at the moment. So I'll just take it off and show you. Yeah, so that's what I'm talking into right now. The output is actually plugged in to this green connector, so that's the headphone out of the Zoom. And then the input is going into the Voice Live rack, which is this thing. Yeah, we're on bypass, but if we do that, that. Hello. hello, we can do some of this, we can do some. So, you know, it's just a give my vocals every chance they I can give them. Next is the Mac Mini, which is just sort of like looking a bit sad down there on the floor. It's connected to a keyboard and monitor through there, so through on my desk, but then that then gets mirrored back out to this screen here <laughs> so that I can see what I'm doing. And I, and I mirror OBS um, to that as well. So it's just screen mirroring on the Mac to two different displays. There's a USB-C, which is going to the other monitor, and then there's an HDMI out, which is going to, to this monitor here so that I can just see like with no latency what's going on when I'm streaming. And I, I'll show you that. So this is, this is currently a QuickTime recording, but yeah. Then plugged into the video input is this Artem Mini, which um, you can see there. That's actually where I'm taking this video signal from now. So if I switch it, you can see we've got, <laughs> like I've got the Amiga plugged through it, uh, as well as another camera, which is just recharging at the moment. So it's the overhead camera. And um, I wouldn't mind having another one, but these, these adapters are so flipping expensive. That's an old. Um, that's an old iPhone uh, seven uh, running shoot, and here is Megatron, and here is Optimus Prime. Here's the camera. Got this little um, zoom lens, manual focus, and then I use this light on the top if I want to get some illumination. Got power going in. Next, yeah, I've mentioned the iPad, but also the iPad has this app on it, Ravenscroft, which was the just the easiest way I could find to have a really nice sounding piano that I could use. Um, and that is controlled uh, over Bluetooth from the X station, which is this keyboard. It's got some synths on it that actually are quite usable. And then it's got this, um, I've got this uh, little Bluetooth, wireless Bluetooth connector in the back that just connects to the keyboard here. So um, if we um, if we have a look at the menu here, so we come into here, we go audio, it's really annoying. Bluetooth MIDI, there you go, not connected. And then I have to tap that. 
that will connect. And now I have to activate it by pressing this tiny hit area here, and then I can close and now. Next we've got my beloved Moog Sub 37 in all its glory. That's obviously a, a nice sounding bit of kit. Uh, there's a bit of reverb on it which is added by the Zoom, uh, which I can just show you on the channel strip. We can just control the reverb. Or I think it's a nice reverb. And next we've got the deluge. <laughs> so this is sort of the the I guess the this is the master clock really. So I've got it set up with audio for when I want to do songs, but of course you can um you can always uh, just go. I want a drum kit and go. The reason I really wanted this uh, particular piece of hardware was because you can really see what's going on, but you can zoom in. So you heard those hi hats, so we can go. If we zoom out now, you can do those little rushes and things like that, and it's got like a triplet mode. Yeah, so it's just like a really musical piece of gear. You got like a synth as well. I wouldn't. I don't love the synth sounds on it, but you know, it's 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 cool if you want a bit of extra texture to things. And then we got the Euro rack here. So this has, if you've seen any of my YouTube videos, um, I go into a lot of detail on what's going on in these. But um, we've got MIDI there with yarns coming in, so that we can clock sync everything. Then I've got grids uh, for doing drums. We have <laughs> my foot controller covered in coffee because I had a horrible accident and my OP1 is currently out of commission. So these four pedals go to go to endless. These, the top five select the routing, uh, what I want to go into endless. So this is like the Moog is this one, the Voice Live is this one, the Chaos Pad is this one, the Deluge is this one. And then number one is used here to um, switch like visual effect <laughs> now we've got the chaos pad here which is cool because i really like the chaos pad because it's got this tempo synced thing so we can do things like hello 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 hello, hello. do pitch shifter hello <laughs> so that's that's always fun got a bit of delay yeah, delay hello. hello and then you may be wondering What's going on here? It's Commodore Amiga, isn't it? My Amiga, which is currently waiting to be loaded, but all we have to do to get this going, for some reason it doesn't like booting straight from the disk, but if we just, it's booting up, we can see from the hard drive, there it is. It automatically launches into Octomed. 
then it goes, what's going on? And you go, yeah, cancel. Stop being weird. And then we got Octomed. So <laughs> just sort of sat there. Uh, we, we take the Amiga audio. This in. Oh, now you can hear the Amiga. <laughs> it's not the quietest thing in the world, but we can um, go through some... But we've got like all the like computer game stuff. Collect credits for bonus weapons. Co collect credits for bonus weapons. What's this? Damn it. Weird stuff like this. <laughs> and, like, and all those classic synth samples. So if we wanted to then sequence that, I, I set the I just set the tempo the same. So if we're at 120. Which we generally are when everything turns on. So we just get the tempo to the right tempo. And then um, usually, like, one way to do it is just press play. Go into edit mode. So now we're in edit mode and everything we do will just be recorded into this track. Oh, and then the wiring, just to sort of clarify, and I, I literally <laughs> have to kind of remind myself how this is set up sometimes. So the MIDI wiring, the master clock sent from here. That goes on a long cable into the back of the X station. Where it has one in and two outs. So the MIDI in comes into the MIDI in there and then one of the MIDI outs is connected to this wireless Bluetooth one and then the other one is connected through to the Moog right which then and then the Moog sends that out to uh, the back of the voice live and, and the main reason to, that I want MIDI to the voice live is because it does this natural play thing so if, if I'm playing something on the keyboard when it's doing harmonies ha major minor. so when we're so you see the midi and then it should be doing that little mp means it detected what key we're in mp for natural play and then that goes out of the voice live into yarns so that our clock synchronize here and then it comes out of the yarns into the foot pedal and then the foot pedal has a like this dodgy old midi interface um that met that you see that thing that's the midi interface that is then plugged into the back of it's just like a cable thing so it goes into the back of the Mac. Sometimes it gets picked up, sometimes it doesn't. Oh, and then finally, yeah, there's these light. There's this light here, um, which uh, is set to just constant at the moment. And I've got this. You see, I've got some like um, some crude kind of uh, gels on them. Usually, I wouldn't have the top lights on. And then I have these lights just set to kind of like change, like randomly, really. And so that just like makes everything. Just brings everything to life a bit more. Uh, so, any questions? Yes, please, can you show me the stuff on the computer now, please? Absolutely, I can, Megatron. So, I've got Audio Hijack, takes the zoom and just, like, delays it a little bit and sends it to Black Hole. So, we just get that up and running. Um, we've got Endless. This is called Element. Um, this app, uh, which gives you just a basic sort of like node-based 
MIDI host, like a host for audio units. So I, the idea of this is I've got this uh, Zoom with like loads and loads of outputs and I've got this audio router node that I want to be able to map the input inputs to the outputs. So if we go here, like if I want to record the modular, then I want channel seven and eight going to one and two on um, the output of this router. So we're routing everything to these two channels and then I can actually you know, control this over MIDI. I can select what is routed into Endless and then Endless sits here like that. Um, and I usually go into the, well, let's find, oh, not that one. So usually we have this and then um, I get, I have it set to record audio in and then I have this uh, up here like this. Then we have my overlay. This is my little Vuo project. If I just run that, let's just check that that's coming in. Sometimes, yeah, so we see USB MIDI is coming into there. And this doesn't show anything here, but this is sending over, if we zoom in, um, so we render, we send this siphon video from this shader toy renderer, which has all these different shaders in it which we select with this business here, including the ability to have MIDI, and that all, that's the foot pedal is. So the foot pedal is also set up here to initiate recordings. Um, so we've got that, yeah, we always record what's coming in the inputs uh, based on this MIDI mapping. Um, tempo is not synced because it's crazy. I stop, I press play. It sort of takes its time to figure out what the tempo is. But I, I hacked the source code of Element so that it still takes the play and stop, and then I just have to manually update the, the tempo if I change tempo somewhere else, uh, which just make it, makes it a bit more reliable. <laughs> Although I would like it if um, the tempo sync from MIDI clock was a bit more accurate. Finally, stream avatars. That's going to start up automatically. Now, the week when I set this up, Ecamm didn't yet support screen capture overlays, so I sort of had to migrate everything over to OBS, but I wouldn't mind coming back to Ecamm because there's lots of reasons to prefer it. But if we launch OBS now, we will see everything running. So this is what it looks like. So you see, I've actually got two like endless captures that just like crop it to, to what we're interested in. So I've just got to make sure we're on there. And then now that's got who the latest mix was. So if you see like here's streaming avatars, if we look at filters has a chroma key on green to make it transparent. Stream elements is in there. I'll show you how to set that up another time. Uh, Endless uh, has, like, it's just like heavily cropped, <laughs> you see. So yeah, we just crop it down to the bit we want. And also in, in um, streaming avatars, I've like made it so that uh, the characters don't walk into. So you see when he comes, when he approaches, so look, he'll, he won't, he'll collide with with the thing and be able to walk on top of it. <laughs> so that's the, that's the computer side. Um, and uh, like if I just turn on the camera, all my video, the camera's actually coming through uh, here, through Vuo. So if it's not working, it just means we've got to select it here. So actually the camera isn't directly coming in because all of our, our visuals are coming through via Vuo. So if we see, we can just like tap, pedal, switch between different shaders. So we're always like sending, uh, let's, uh, let me just bring that into focus. And so you can see the overlay of, so it's a shader that brings in the video and then does some other stuff. And this is all sound reactive. I'm just switching on the Artem here between the different sources. Um, that's the Amiga from before I turned it on. And then it's controlled by the foot pedal. So I just hit one and that will, you can see each time it just kind of picks a random one. And you can see that mirrored in that overlay foot pedal pink window down there as well. So if you're interested in this sort of thing, like please do come and first follow me on Twitch. That's twitch.tv slash Michael Forrest. I'll put that link in the description. But also come to squares.tv because I am talking to other people about how they do it now. And I'm putting interviews up on there. I'm just really trying to create tools and information and make it a bit of a hub for this sort of slightly technical, you know, music, audio, visual, creative content, especially if it comes to live streaming, things like that. Because like going live is 
difficult. There's so many things that can go wrong, and there's there's so many people doing interesting stuff now. I think this is really like a sort of a bit of a new frontier still. So that's either in like music and things like that, or like business, like demonstrating things. So I've got a few videos on the shoot channel about like how to do a crafting demo. Like you can get people to pay for a workshop and things like that. But and actually a lot of this stuff is. You know, you're either looking for stream donations or you're, you know, trying to have a business where you're doing these live streams and workshops and things for people. It's, I think it's a really interesting world and maybe there's a way that some of us can get out of our day jobs and not have to do that kind of thing by learning how to do all this kind of thing. Yeah, just generally, if you want to click through, come to the Squares TV blog post. I'll, I'll list more details and you can sort of explore all the connections and things using this sort of rig explorer thing there. So, hope you enjoyed that anyway. Thank you.